anybody? You want your cheese? This is Odin. He's the alpha male. So there's usually one wolf who's second in command, next in line. They're in charge of the pack. When the alphas are away, they're called a beta wolf. This is Amarok. Amarok is the beta wolf, second in command. Everybody has their spot throughout that ranking. There's always going to be one wolf who's the very shyest in the pack. They're going to be the lowest ranking member. The lowest member is called the Omega. This is Oshika. She's the Omega in the pack, the shyest one. Hard to get her a treat because she won't come up to the fence. And her mean older sister steals all of her treats. But sometimes we fake her sister out that way. Well, she's looking over there. She knows to wait by the tree for hers. <laughs> now, the way they figure out where they sit in that order is every day they growl and snarl and bite at each other's faces. They'll jump on each other's backs and push each other down. Sounds like they're tearing each other apart. But it's all just a show to see who's tougher than who. Now, wolves only have puppies once a year. Communities, they call us anytime there's a deer hit by a car. We'll pick those deer up. We work with some farmers here in North New Jersey that have permission to shoot the deer when they're destroying their crops. We'll take those deer. And we also end up buying a lot of meat. We feed close to 50,000 pounds of meat a year here. Quite a bit. I'll feed two different ways. When I'm feeding the meat that we have bought, it looks like hamburger. But it's deer meat that's been all ground up. We'll buy 50-pound frozen blocks, cut it into smaller pieces, and I'll throw each wolf in a frozen block of meat that's about three pounds. They all get fed about three pounds of meat a day. Now, some people think it's strange we feed it to them frozen. The reason I feed it frozen is, like I said earlier, whenever there's food around, the alphas will eat first, and they'll gobble down as much as they can. If there's not enough to go around, some of the lower-ranking members might not get anything to eat. But when they've frozen, they all run in and grab their piece. They run back in the woods and sit down. It takes them a couple of minutes to chew through it and eat it. Gives everybody a chance to run in and grab their own piece. So we know that they're all fed every day. Doesn't bother them that it's frozen. In the wild, if they were to find a moose that had died of starvation and was frozen in a snowbank, they wouldn't pass up that free meal. They seem to enjoy it on the hot summer days. It's kind of like a, a meat pop or a meatsicle. Helps cool them off a little bit. And unfortunately, it all depends. We have a few that act like pigs and try to make a secret stash of those blocks of food. They'll grab a piece, run up, and hide it behind a log. Grab another one and try to hide it somewhere. Some of the little guys like Raven here, Raven's smart enough to know they do that. But when they come in for their second piece, they'll run up and steal the first one. And everybody still gets fed every day. The second way that we feed is when we do get a deer. The only thing we do to that deer is take the stomach and the intestines out because of bacteria and parasites. Other than that, I'll drag the whole deer in for them. These guys will tear it down, and it'll be gone in less than a half an hour. And they'll eat that entire deer. They eat the bones, the hair, the hide. The entire deer is gone in less than a half an hour. Now, besides the antlers, I usually saw the antlers off the deer, so no one gets jabbed by them when they're tearing it apart. Besides the antlers, there's only one other part of the deer they won't eat. For anybody who hasn't been here before, I know some of you have. Anybody who hasn't been here before, any guesses? The one part they won't eat. Have you been here before? No. Did your dad tell you? No. Okay, what's your guess? Teeth. You got it. Good job. <laughs> That's the one part they won't eat? That's the one part. Depending on the size of it, it's about every two to three days that we feed them. Because we need to give them time to digest all that food they just crammed down in their stomach. In the wild, they were to hunt and take down an 800-pound moose. Every one of those pack members is going to eat as much as they can, up to 30 pounds. Then they lay around and sleep for about a week. They do nothing but sleep and digest their food. Now, wolves will howl for a bunch of different reasons. The main reason they howl is to join or rally the pack together. When one member starts howling, it's a sign for all the rest to join in. They all have their own voice, and they can tell each other's voices apart. This way they know that everybody's here, and everybody's okay. They howl when they're sad. They howl when they're excited. They howl when they hear a fire siren off in the distance. They howl at that fire siren because they think it's another pack intruding on their territory. But it's a different howl. They'll change the tone or the pitch of their voices up and down throughout that howl to make a pack of 20 wolves sound like a pack of 40 and fool that neighboring pack, even though here it's only a fire siren. Some people say my dog at home howls the fire sirens, and one of the reasons could be what most biologists believe is that the wolf is the very first canine, or the very first dog, and that over 20,000 years of evolution, all other dogs have come from a wolf. I personally find pack together. They lift their heads up so their voices carry, and man has just turned it into them howling at the moon because you heard them more often. Sometimes we can get them to howl here, but we have to howl first like a pack of wolves. And the more people howling, the better chance you got them answer. But the trick is, it's important. If they answer, then we need to stop so we can hear them. Because sometimes the kids and sometimes the adults keep howling louder than 
the wolves. <laughs> Nobody gets a chance to hear the wolves themselves. Now, my best howler, that's Apache laying down right up there. She's my best howler. She'll usually answer us. The little white ones are pretty good too, but I don't see any of them around. They all disappeared. Now look. Sequoia, where you at? They're gone. Mm. We might hear them in the back. Everybody's pretty lazy, but we can, we can still give it a try. <laughs> Anytime you're ready, go ahead and give it a shot see if they answer. <laughs> <laughs> Patchy, come on, let's go. Patchy, you ready? Come on, give me a good loud one. Sequoia, <laughs> <laughs> come on, buddy. Let's go. That one is a loud one. So what, these guys are usually pretty good if we can get them to go. Come on, Sequoia, give me a good one. There's autumn up in the back. You can do better than that. Come on, give me a good one. Come on, Ryan. Come on, one more time, really loud. <laughs> Anywhere you see interior fencing, we have another three feet of fences laid out to the insides, tied in at the upright, then backfilled or buried. Wolves don't try to climb or jump out, they're diggers. They would try to dig out. What they would do is come to the edge, dig down and hit that fencing and give up. They don't know to go back three feet and tunnel underneath. But again, these guys were born in captivity. This is the best home they've ever known. They get fed every day, fresh water every day, and most important, they have enough room. Where well, they're very comfortable, we've had no trouble with them even trying to get out. In order for us to be here, we have to have a whole list of permits. We're under spot inspection by the state of New Jersey and the federal government. They both come a few times a year and inspect us to make sure that everything is safe, up to code, and that the animals are healthy. And last, our three ways that we raise money to feed these guys and take care of them is to people like yourselves coming in to visit, so thank you very much for coming in today. Our second way is through sponsorship program. We can sponsor one of the wolves for a year. All that information is in our brochure. You can pick one up outside here or down in the camp office. And our third way is through photography. That's what these panels and the fencing are for. In New Jersey, we're not allowed to let anybody in the compounds with the animals, but photographers will pay for guided tours through the walkways. These panels open up, and we work with pieces of meat to try to get them set up as best we can. 